What's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another episode of The Dossier, the Marvel Crisis Protocol show, where we talk all things Crisis Protocol characters, the models they look, uh, how they look, how they're designed, and the character cards that go with them, and uh, just generally some thoughts on uh, where they kind of exist in the game. Uh, just remember that these are just opinions. Uh, we're just engaging in the discussion. You can find lots of other discussions out there, and I definitely encourage you to do so. Uh, today, I am joined by Jason from Zetrox Wargaming. How's it going? He is a friend and guest of the channel, and uh, agreed to do this with me after a little bit of browbeating. <laughs> so it's it's always it's always good to have uh, friends. Uh, but today we are going to be talking about Malkith the Accursed, and uh, this is a character who's had a very interesting year on the scene for yeah. Crisis Protocol, because he came in like a friggin' wrecking ball. Yeah. Uh, got a hot fix. Was still a wrecking ball. Got another fix, and now we're we're in the uh, we're in the find out stage of things to see if yeah. whether or not uh, whether or not those fixes are are doing it. So let's talk about Malkith himself first off. And uh, so we we got big old Joe Exotic on here, uh, riding the the winged tiger. And uh, what do you think of the model? I think Malkith had no right to be this cool. This model is freaking amazing. I love the tiger. I think. I mean, the tiger is what I care about here. Malkith himself looks <laughs> fine, but. The cat looks awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, Malkith is seventh threat, but by that we mean the tiger is sixth threat. Malkith is one. I don't even know if I give him one. <laughs> so, uh, I, I've seen Thor: The Dark World. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I've seen it twice too, and I don't remember a damn thing about it. <laughs> I know Malkith is in it. But, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, as far as like the dynamic aspect of the model goes, like this is probably AMG's sort of like biggest most dynamic model like you have that you have that tiger stalking up the the column there you got the outspread wings what is it a bog tiger i think it is i'm um, not sure yeah somebody smarter than me will know uh i even like malkith's pose I yeah like. i think it looks great he, he looks like he's like ready to leap off and stab someone yeah um, yeah like all in all the model is it's a well-designed model um, oh yeah it's it did actually require a ruling from AMG to discuss, like, well, what how happens? the wings. Yeah, like, how do the wings interact? Because if you can't place the model because the wings are getting, like, caught by terrain or other characters, then they've actually ruled that you can't place the model there. It's, yep. it's an ineligible place, uh, which I don't think I've ever seen enforced. No. For the record. I mean, it's going to come up so few times, right? Like, it will come up, but not that often. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's a very dynamic model. It was actually very easy to assemble as well. Yeah. I got to give him credit for that. Like a model that has all this going on for, I thought it was going to be a little bit harder to put together. Definitely expected to be worse um, than it is. Like all the grooves are in the right place. Actually, getting Malkith himself to balance on the tiger's back actually was a lot easier. Yep. Than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, I got to give him props to it. It's it's a solid model. Um, I've never been a big fan of like these these bigger models myself, but I can definitely see the appeal. That's for a lot of people on that one. Um, so let's, let's talk, let's talk his card here. Oh boy. And there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot here. So we got his stat line. He's got fours across the board for defensives, nine stamina on his front. I believe it goes down to seven. Yeah. Sam, seven on his back. He's seventh threat, which, uh, next to Dormammu is, you know, the next highest threat in the game. Yep. There's only one other character at seventh threat. He's size four, or rather the tiger is size four, uh, and he moves medium on a big size base. So he's got an insane amount of mobility. Yeah, I mean medium on a on a larger base is always oh, that's, fantastic. That's a medium, yeah, sorry, that's a medium size base, not a large size base. No, no, this is large. Oh yeah, it is a large size base. Okay, you're throwing me off here. Uh, uh, yeah, no, he he's got a lot of mobility there, and he's got a kit that really facilitates that as well. Um, so his first attack is the Blade of Midnight. It's range two, seven dice. It's an energy attack, and it is your standard uh, builder attack. Yep. Now, uh, a substantial change on this one is that it used to have a wild pierce. Yep. Which I'm going to share some thoughts on the very end of this this thing. Um, but yeah, so that that was changed, and that actually brought his lethality down. He's still rolling a lot of dice. Like seven dice is still a lot to deal with. Yep. That that it that's, is still a solid dice pool. I mean that that's spender level. Yep. Like area, right? I think uh, like She-Hulk and Hulk, I think, are the only other ones who have like a seven base. Uh, that I can think of? Yeah, there might be one or two more, but it's it's a few and far between. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so next up we got a Mystic Attack, Blood Boil. It's a beam four, five dice. Uh, it is a gainer attack, uh, which, I mean, if you get multiple characters, cool. With a Wild Poison. Uh, I've seen it used in niche cases where you really need to get that extra reach or, yep. or more than one model. Or you need that power. Or right. just because it's a mystic attack. Yep. And poison can be kind of obnoxious sometimes. Definitely. Right? It's one of those often overlooked conditions. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Uh, then we got Butcher of Thors, which is a range 3, 10 dice physical attack for 4 power. 
Uh, it is uh, you you place Malkith within range one of the target character. Yep. So there's that hyper mobility again right off yep. the hop. Uh, and then it's got Dark Curse for each wild uh, in the attack. The defending character will gain bleed, hex, shock, slow, or stun. And Oof. it's each wild. That's a, that's a condition soup you can throw yeah. out there. If they survive your 10 dice. Yeah, attack. that's the thing. It's like, okay, do I really care about this? Are you 10 dice? Am I even alive after all this? <laughs> uh, but it, it is big. Like, you throw yeah. this into, like, say, a Hulk or something like that, it's going to slow him down considerably. For sure. Um, which, I mean, it's you're not always using it because I think he's got a very he's got a very varied kit yep. on this one. And he's got an overall expensive kit, so throwing out the builder can sometimes be something a little hard to do. But. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, granted, I mean, the Blade of Midnight, you're getting a lot of power back for that. But uh, yeah, so we have a leadership on him. He's got the Dark Council for Cabal. Basically, it's it's almost like a reverse Sam. Yep. Whenever uh, whenever an, uh, an allied character would daze or KO an enemy character, you choose another, so not the character who did the dazing or KOing, another character, allied character, they can uh, regain one stamina, they, they gain one power, and they advance short. Yep. So I think the big difference here between him and Sam is Sam gets a condition back as well, I think. Yeah, Sam also pulls off a condition, and of course his is when you when one of your guys gets dazed or kicked. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's actually a really good... Oh, and Sam doesn't give you power. Oh, that's right. Sam doesn't give you power, right. Uh, it's actually it's a really good leadership. It is. Um, and quite it, solid on a more attrition-y list. Yeah, if you want to build an attrition list, like this is going to facilitate it quite a bit. The big balancing factor of it is like Malkith has eaten up almost half your squad. Yeah, being a seventh right. threat is... Not always easy to squeeze it. Uh, why don't you take us through his superpowers? Yeah, so first thing he's got is Frenzy. This is going to be a three cost. Ferocity. Oh, Ferocity. My bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading on an angle. Um, ferocity. It's going to be a three cost. It's an action. Uh, basically, it's going to be a fancy charge into the specifically the Blade of Midnight attack. However, if the attack deals damage and the target is size three or less, after the attack is resolved, he's going to get to throw them small that, in the direction. And that used to be a size unrestricted throw. Yes, that, that was, used to be whatever you wanted. Sentinels, <laughs> Hulks getting tossed around. That was crazy. Um, but yeah, so I mean, charges are always good. Charge on a uh, on a large base even better. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's very good. Charges with throws attached, also very good. Um, now, it also used to only be two power yes, back in the day, yes. right? Well, before his initial nerf, it was yeah. two, two power. Um, and then next up, he has the, is it Cloak of Shadows? Yeah. Uh, so this is an X cost, and basically, during the resolve critical step when you're rolling dice, uh, you can pay as much power as you would like to turn skulls, uh, basically treat them as criticals. So obnoxious. Um, so it's very similar to Domino's ability. And it's attack, defense, and dodge as well. Attack, defense, and dodge. So almost everything. You can't do it when you're flipping objectives. But oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just choose murder. <laughs> hey, it's the one thing reality has on it. Um, um, yeah, no, this, this is an insane bit of defensive attack. Like, I, again, you don't really think about the amount of skulls you're rolling until you actually go into some tech like this. Yep. And uh, it it can get pretty it can get pretty wild. Well, especially when you're racking up in the dice count, right? Uh, you know, your seven dice attacks and thing uh, and ten dice attacks are really going to benefit from this. And then when you're doing stuff like the builder, those skulls are being treated as critical, so you're going to get the power back that you're spending on it, assuming you were doing damage to begin with. And then if you explode those criticals into more hits, then that's just more damage. And you probably murdered someone. <laughs> and there you also a good chance you just murdered something. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then, I mean, that, that bleeds into Conqueror of the Ten Realms, where he gets that additional power in the power phase. Yep. So that's going to help him yep. get online faster. It doesn't quite give him turn one ferocities or anything like that. Not anymore, does. thankfully. It used to, yeah. Um, but, it, but it does help him get those skulls going faster and things like that. So, so if you can get him to be making attacks right away, he's going to be benefiting from that. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, uh, he, he's immune to Hex and Stone, which are great conditions to be immune to when you're a model like this. And, and he has he's got Flight. flight so which, I mean, at size 4, the only thing he cares about is size 5 buildings at that point. Yeah, but it's still um, relevant that it's there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to share my, my initial thoughts on When he came out, he had his Pierce on Blade of Midnight. He, he had the, the Skulls, and it was even a little bit more busted, because at the time, the way the timing worked is you could... Uh, you could pay in advance yeah. for the skulls as well. So, so you after could, the explosion, your skulls that you rolled into. Yeah, so you could drop a whole bunch of power on that. Uh, he had the two power ferocity, yep. which meant his ferocity was online turn one. And when you have a medium move on a big base, he's reaching out and touching you wherever yep. wherever you are. And uh, what was the other big thing? Uh, Butcher of Thor's didn't used to have hex. Yep. And didn't he have another piece of defensive tech? Oh, yeah, that's right. You couldn't re-roll into him. Yep, you weren't yeah. allowed to modify your dice when attacking. And I forgot all about that one. 
And when he came out, I remember leading up to December, I was saying, it's like, okay, here, here's what needs to change. And, oh, he also used to have more stamina. He yes. was 10 and 8. Yes. And uh, I said what needed to change. He needed to lose his pierce. The uh, He needed to have the ferocity up more power, like, need to be more expensive. Yep. And you need to get rid of the rerolls into him. Those were the three things that I said. Yeah. The first change got rid of the, uh, like, it changed the timing on the Cloak of Shadows, or changed the ability to prepay Cloak of Shadows, and ferocity went up. Yep. All right, so I'll take a small win there. Then this change came through, and everything else I suggested came to fruition. Uh, on top of that, I got a, I got a nice little, uh, a nice little loss of uh, the stamina. I do think he lost the can't re-roll into him on the first change as well. Yeah, that was on the yeah. first change. That was on the first um, change. So I feel vindicated uh, a year, a year into it. Um, <laughs> but we've had some discussions off camera on this one. So yeah. uh, internet hate Jason. <laughs> Jason, Personally, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think after the first nerf, he was in a much better place. He was definitely still a meta-defining model. Um, but I think with the second nerf, personally, I find they went a little too hard. I think looking at seven dice builders without the pierce, they're still not bad by any means, but I don't think they're quite worthy of a seven threat. And then hitting his hit points on top of that, making him, I think it's what, nine, seven now. Yeah. He's also, again, I wouldn't go as far as to call him squishy, but for a seven threat, he feels like he might be considered squishy. So, I don't know. Personally, I, I haven't had much experience with him since the nerf, and, and to be fair, I had fairly limited experience with him before the second nerf as well. Um, but I don't see him as a model that I think is quite worth 7. I feel like he's almost at around 6 level now, because I compare him to stuff like Hulk or She-Hulk, like you say, who have those 7 dice builders, and it doesn't feel like he's bringing much more to the table than they are. So I, I think my pushback on that one, though, is that he still has the ferocity, right? Yeah. Which has that, that big throw. Oh, that was the other thing that changed, the, the unrestricted size throw. Yeah. Um, so he still has the, the, the ferocity, which does the Blade of Shadows into the, or, uh, into the, uh, or Blade of Midnight into the throw. Yep. Which is huge. Which is still good. Still I mean, very good. That, that's an extra point of damage on your target yep. right off the hop. And you're possibly, at this point, doing up to, like, four damage into another target that way. Um, so that's the first thing. The other thing is the Cloak of Shadows. And that and, is huge. And that's the big thing right there. Like, when you had all that tech on top of each other, the pierce, the cloak of shadows, all that sort of stuff, the ferocity, it created a very oppressive character. Like, there was very few targets in the game that he could not take down in a single in a single action. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> pre, uh, pre losing the pierce, um, he, I think, anyone with five health, he, he was um, over, over average odds he took down. Once they hit six health, uh, I think he was he was expected to need to double yeah. tap, or if there was like a damage reduction or something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. So it's I don't necessarily agree that he now feels like a six. I do think he still feels like a seven. I think he still has a lot of really good kit to him. I think the big thing though is that he's a little bit more difficult to get the most out of. Yeah, I think there's I think there's that. Um, and obviously, the model I'm comparing him to is another one that's kind of considered a problem in the meta, which is Hulk. Um, because Hulk I, should be a seven. I, I, I do just look at Hulk and I look at him and I kind of think like Hulk can do a lot of the same things for a threat less. Um, there are advantages to Malkith. Malkith has better defensive tech, um, better for, mobility, for sure. arguably better mobility. Although I do think Amelie kind of helps make up for that in a big way. Um, but yeah, like there's, there's definitely still reasons to bring him. It's just, he doesn't feel as impactful as I feel like I want a 7 threat to anymore. But again, there is limited experience here. I really haven't played against him since his nerf. I think the other part of this discussion, though, is that these changes also came hot on the heels of Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah. Right? So we have another character who's kind of blowing up the meta right now, who's who's being fairly problematic, and we've gotten Malkith toned down, who used to be problematic. So it could be, like, does he now seem a little bit weaker in comparison? Like, Well, and I think that's part of it as well. Is again, that's another sixth threat to compare him to, where, yeah, that sixth threat is considered a problem right now, and I don't disagree with that, but it's so, the sixth threat that's outshining Malchus at Malchus' job. So, so, okay, so getting the internet <laughs> hatred back on me, I'm going to say something very, very thing. I don't think AMG really designed six-plus characters all that well. I honestly feel that She-Hulk should be considered the baseline for what a sixth threat character should be. And everyone outside of Magneto, I feel, is way better than She-Hulk. See, I I don't well, agree. Maybe not, or, maybe not Hulkbuster, but <laughs> I don't disagree with you on the second part that uh, that everyone outside of maybe Magneto is is better than her in the sixth threat tier. I do think She-Hulk 
feels a little underpowered for six in my opinion, but and that's and that's the point of difference there. Like I feel like that's what a six should feel like. Yeah. And Hulk and Cosmic Ghost Rider and Malkit, like they all feel too powerful for what their threat is. And then you get Dormammu who feels like a six threat. <laughs> Just, yeah, Dormammu so. is unfortunately lacking some yeah. something. And and the reason I bring that up is because I think it actually kind of impacts the discussion around these characters. For sure. Um like here's the thing. If if Malkith were to come out today with this card, I don't think anyone would look at it and say this is a bad card. And I don't know if I necessarily think he's bad. I just don't know if he feels like he's worth seven anymore. I, I don't think that means he's unplayable by any means. I, I, I do think he's still a very solid model, and he's still going to have impact on the field. I don't think we're going to see him splashed. I definitely don't expect to see him splashed very many places. There might be the odd place someone's found a good combo or something. But he but. used to be everywhere. Like I remember we, we went to a bunch of the same tournaments uh, early on uh, before his first change yep. in December. And uh, and like he was he was I think in like every second list. I I was lucky enough to be able to dodge him a lot, but he was seeing a lot of play. I, I made a gentleman's agreement with uh, with somebody one time. It's like, yeah, neither of us are going to bring Malkith. And I totally expected him to bring Malkith down anyway, but well, I'll give him props. He he didn't. But yeah, he he was everywhere yeah. for a little bit there. And I'm I'm kind of glad that I we don't have to deal with him as often these days. I don't think he's as meta skewing as he no, used to be. Not even close. Uh, which is really nice. And that's kind of where I think a character should be. I I personally think that he's where he should be at the moment um and obviously like this is just my my take on it other people like yourself included <laughs> will will disagree and you have your own takes and they're, they're perfectly valid as well so but uh, yeah so that that is malketh uh, he is the he's malketh the accursed let us know what you think do you think he got hit too hard do you think he got hit just right or do you want to see him go back to his crazy shenanigans yeah let's uh, go back to pre first nerf yeah malketh. yeah let's, let's get some internet hey, rage somewhere else then we get some malketh versus cgr and find out which one's grosser no oh, <laughs> goodness i i don't want to live in this world anymore <laughs> uh but there we go so that is malketh get involved in the discussion below and of course if you want to support the channel patreon.com slash studios thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time happy wargaming